An Inconvenient Truth from Wikipedia, the Free Encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. An Inconvenient Truth is a documentary film about climate change, especially global warming, directed by Davis Guggenheim and starring former United States Vice President Al Gore. The documentary is based largely on a multimedia presentation that Gore developed over many years as part of an educational campaign on global warming. An Inconvenient Truth is also the title of a campaign and book by Gore, which reached number one on the New York Times bestseller list of 2 July and 13 August 2006, and again during several months on the list. The film premiered at the 2006 Sundance Film Festival and opened in New York and Los Angeles on 24 May 2006. See 2006 in film. It is the third highest grossing documentary in the United States to date. Both Gore and Paramount Classics, the film's distributor, have pledged proceeds from the film to further educational campaigns about climate change. The film is due to be released on DVD by Paramount Home Entertainment on November 21, 2006. Section 1. Overview all essentially a documentary film, An Inconvenient Truth follows a dramatic plot in the sequence in which facts are reviewed and predictions are emphasized, while also interjecting personal events from the life of Al Gore. Rather than simply listing facts in a dry, mechanical manner, the film places its subject in an emotional and moral context with dramatic plot elements. Former U.S. Vice President Al Gore comes to grips with his life's purpose after the events of the 2000 presidential election and rededicates himself to the struggle against global warming. Through a keynote presentation, dubbed the slideshow that he has presented worldwide, Gore reviews the scientific evidence for global warming, discusses the politics and economics of global warming, and describes the serious consequences that global climate change will produce if the amount of human-generated greenhouse gases is not significantly reduced in the very near future. The film includes many segments intended to refute critics who say that global warming is insignificant or unproven. For example, he discusses the risk of a collapse of a major ice sheet in Greenland or Antarctica either of which could raise global sea levels by approximately 20 feet, or 6 meters, flooding coastal areas and producing 100 million refugees. Meltwater from Greenland, because of its lower salinity, could halt the Gulf Stream current and quickly trigger dramatic local cooling in northern Europe. In an effort to explain the global warming phenomenon, the film examines annual temperature and CO2 levels for the past 600,000 years in Antarctic ice core samples. An analogy to Hurricane Katrina is used for those familiar with the 30 feet to 45 feet or 6 meter to 14 meter waves that destroyed almost a million homes in coastal Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, and Florida. The documentary ends with Gore noting that if appropriate action is taken soon, the effects of global warming can be successfully reversed by releasing less carbon dioxide and growing more plants or trees. Gore calls upon viewers to learn how they can help in this initiative. Gore's book of the same title was published concurrently with the theatrical release of the documentary. The book contains additional, detailed information, scientific analysis, and Gore's commentary on the issues presented in the documentary. Section 2. Origins Gore first became intrigued by the topic of global warming when he took a course at Harvard University with Professor Roger Revelle, one of the first scientists to measure carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Later, when Gore was in Congress, he initiated the first congressional hearing on the subject, brought in climate scientists, and began talking to politicians about the issue. He thought that once legislators heard the compelling evidence, they would be driven into action. Ultimately, 
though the process was a slow one. Gore's 1992 book, Earth in the Balance, dealing with a number of environmental topics, reached the New York Times bestseller list. As vice president during the Clinton administration, Gore pushed for the implementation of a carbon tax to modify incentives to reduce fossil fuel consumption and thereby decrease emission of greenhouse gases. It was partially implemented in 1993. He helped broker the 1997 Kyoto Protocol, an international treaty designed to curb greenhouse gas emissions. However, it was not ratified in the United States due to opposition in the Senate. Gore also supported the funding of a satellite called Triana to increase awareness of environmental issues and to take part in the first direct measurements of how much sunlight is reflected from the Earth. During his 2000 presidential campaign, Gore ran, in part, in a pledge to ratify the Kyoto Protocol. After his defeat in the 2000 presidential election, Gore returned his focus to the topic. He edited and adapted the slideshow he had compiled years earlier, and began featuring the slideshow in multimedia presentations on global warming across the US and across the world. At the time of the film, Gore estimated that he has shown the presentation more than 1,000 times. Producers Laurie David and Lawrence Bender saw Gore's slideshow in New York City after the 2004 premiere of The Day After Tomorrow. Inspired, they met with director Davis Guggenheim about the possibility of making the slideshow into a movie. Guggenheim, who was skeptical at first, later saw the presentation for himself and stated that he was blown away and left after an hour and a half, thinking that global warming was the most important issue. I had no idea how you'd make a film out of it, but I wanted to try, he said. Section 3. Scientific Basis Gore's basic claim that global warming is real and largely human-caused is supported by current research. See link Scientific Opinion on Climate Change. The Associated Press contacted more than 100 top climate researchers and questioned them about the film's veracity. Although at the time before the film's general release, when many of those surveyed had neither seen the movie nor read the book, all 19 climate scientists who had done so said that Gore conveyed the science correctly. The US Senate Committee on Environment and Public Works, chaired by Senator Jim Info, a global warming skeptic who received more than a million dollars from oil and gas companies in 2002, issued a press release criticizing this article. In full statement that global warming is the greatest hoax ever perpetrated on the American people appears in the film. Real Climate, a group blog maintained by 11 climate scientists, lauded the film's science as remarkably up-to-date, with reference to some of the very latest research. Science historian and founder of the Skeptic Society, Michael Shermer, wrote in Scientific American that an inconvenient truth shocked me out of my doubting stance. However, in a 26 June 2006 editorial in the Wall Street Journal, climatologist and global warming skeptic Richard Linson criticized the movie and questioned its claims. A response to Linson's piece disputes the basis for his claims as allegedly not supported by currently available data. God discusses the possibility of a sudden rise in sea level of 20 feet or 6 meters were a major polar ice sheet collapse. This should not be confused with the more certain, gradual, and moderate rise due to non-catastrophic ice melting and the thermal expansion of water. The IPCC's third assessment summary estimates the latter as between 0.1 to 0.85 meters, or 0.3 to 2.8 feet, by the year 2100 but notes that this range does not allow for uncertainty relating to ice dynamical changes in the West Antarctic ice sheet. The Antarctic as a whole contains enough ice to raise the sea level by an estimated 60 meters 200 feet if it were to melt entirely, and the collapse of grounded interior reservoir of the West Antarctic ice sheet alone would raise sea level by 5 to 6 meters 16 to 20 feet. 
Section 4. Promotion The film, which opened at film festivals, was promoted with taglines such as A Global Warning We Are All on Thin Ice By far the most terrifying film you will ever see And the scariest film this summer is one where you are the villain and the hero Section 5 Performance Section 5.1 Box Office The film opened in New York City and Los Angeles on Wednesday, 24 May 2006. On Memorial Day weekend, it grossed an average of $91,447 per theatre, the highest of any movie that weekend, and a record for a documentary, though it was only playing on four screens at that time. At the 2006 Sundance Film Festival, the movie received a free time standing ovation. It was also screened at the Cannes Film Festival and was an opening night film at the 27th Durban International Film Festival on 14 June 2006. An Inconvenient Truth was the most popular documentary at the 2006 Brisbane International Film Festival. The film has grossed over 23 million as of 6 September 2006 making it the third highest grossing documentary in the US to date, after Fahrenheit 9-11 and March of the Penguins. Al Gore has stated, Tipper and I are devoting 100% of the profits from the book and the movie to a new bipartisan educational campaign to further spread the message about global warming. Paramount Classics is committing 5% of their domestic theatrical growth for the film to a new bipartisan climate action group Alliance for Climate Protection, dedicated to awareness and grassroots organizing. Section 5.2 Reviews Critical reaction to the film has been extremely positive in both left and right media. It has garnered a certified fresh 92% rating at Rotten Tomatoes as of 2 September 2006, with a 94% rating from the cream of the crop reviewers. Film critics Roger Ebert and Richard Roper gave the film two thumbs up. Ebert wrote, In 39 years, I have never written these words in a movie review, but here they are. You owe it to yourself to see this film. If you do not, and you have grandchildren, you should explain to them why you decided not to. A few critics were not so impressed. For instance, journalist Ronald Bailey argued in the libertarian magazine Reason that although Gauss get the signs more right than wrong, he exaggerates the risks. The response at Sundance was echoed in box office proceeds. The film received special recognition from the Humanities Prize, the first time the organization had handed out a special award in over 10 years. Section 5.3 Political Response President Bush, when asked whether he would watch the film, responded, doubt it. He later said that we need to set aside whether or not greenhouse gases have been caused by mankind or because of natural effects. Gore responded by saying, the entire global scientific community has a consensus on the question that human beings are responsible for global warming and Bush has today again expressed personal doubt that it is true. In August 2006, the Wall Street Journal reviewed that a YouTube video lampooning God and the movie, entitled Al Gore's Penguin Army, appeared to be astroturfing by DCI Group, a Washington PR firm with ties to ExxonMobil as well as the Republican Party. In September 2006, Gore travelled to Sydney, Australia to promote the film. Australian Prime Minister John Howard said that he would not meet with Gore or agree to Kyoto because of the movie. I don't take policy advice from films. Opposition leader Keen Beasley joined Gore for a viewing and other MPs attended a special screening at Parliament House earlier in the week. Australia's federal government currently refuses to ratify the Kyoto Protocol. Section 5.4 Influences on Popular Culture Prior to being released, the film was parodied in the South Park episode, Man Bear Pig. Gore laughed off the sensationalized depiction of him, saying, 
Their comic sensibility is aimed at a different demographic than the one I inhabit, but I still find a lot of what they do hilarious. Stephen Colbert on The Colbert Report also parodied an inconvenient truth on 17 July 2006. Entitled The Convenience's Truth, Colbert created his own presentation that argued for the positive effects of global warming, using his signature humor tactics to satirize the conservative response to Gore's presentation. During the movie, Al Gore shows a clip from the Futurama episode Crimes of the Hot dealing with global warming. Al Gore was a guest star in the episode, though he was not present in the clip. In addition, Gore stars in a Fox trailer made by the Futurama cast and crew titled A Terrifying Message from Al Gore. The Competitive Enterprise Institute ran two television advertisements to counter global warming alarmism in an apparent reply to an inconvenient truth. Both used the tagline, carbon dioxide, they call it pollution, we call it life. Comedian John Stewart mocked the Competitive Enterprise Institute and other critics of the movie on The Daily Show. Gore and a fringe group of radical liberals known as scientists believes that the Earth is being damaged by man-made carbon dioxide. Well, badmouth humanity all you want, but this carbon dioxide and the Competitive Enterprise Institute is likely to open up a can of public service advertisement on your ass. Institute's ads are shown on screen. I know what you're driving at, but I really don't think science and liberals are going to outlaw breathing. The television show X-Play did two separate parody sketches as promotions for G Watts award show G Foria. One sketch showed an Al Gore impersonator warning about temperature increases in Middle Earth due to the Eye of Sauron. See also Al Gore, Global Warming Controversy, Effects of Global Warming, Mitigation of Global Warming, Climate Change Response, Politics of Global Warming, Economics of Global Warming Climate Change Attribution of Recent Climate Change Glossary of Climate Change Timeline of Environmental Events The Planet Are We Changing Planet Earth? Global Warming Pole And Environmentalism External Links 11 Reviews 4 Interviews and 12 Miscellaneous Links can be found in external links. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU Free Documentation License, available at www.gnu.org/copyleft/fdl.html.